Yo Futures, it just came out today that Microsoft's AI team has basically developed a speech recognition algorithm that is on par with humans. I think the error rate is 5.9%, which is the same as humans. Meaning both humans and computers now have a uh, speech recognition error rate of 5.9%, but obviously we know that technology improves faster, so next year machines will be much better than humans. And so while human level speech recognition would have been something that just a few years ago would have been considered completely impossible, now it's one of those things that we'll probably relegate to, of course that was easy, of course that's not AI. And so the cool thing about this now is that machines can basically recognize the gibberish that humans push out of our flappy air mouths um, almost perfectly, as good as humans, and next year it'll be almost perfect. I'm sure you've noticed over the last year or two that the voice recognition, the speech recognition on your phone has become pretty damn good, but now that it's actually on par with humans, it opens up that whole conversational user interface trend. This now lays the foundation for our machines to truly understand us, I mean to truly recognize exactly what we're saying. Then the next step is really the kind of like Rosetta Stone of working out what we really mean when we say It'll have an immediate effect on technologies like Siri, like Google Home, like Amazon's Alexa, and then the next step is really just like, well, what else can that be applied to? Things like AirPods, like, you know, recognizing speech. Every and what it means too is that we're actually one step closer to being in the future vision of the movie Her, where everyone's currently wearing in-ear smart earpods or earbuds, a little bit like the next generation of AirPods. Because when everyone's wearing smart earpods in their ears and walking around all day with these in, just listening to music and doing the regular things, they're not only augmenting their auditory inputs and outputs, but because these will be always on and always listening to everything you say and always connected, they become a bridge between you, your voice, and the machines. So you can actually control those interfaces. And that's really the fascinating thing with all these technology leaps. We know that they're basically, uh, that technology is already a more intelligent species that's growing faster every year. We know they're going to take over, so we want to merge. It's pretty clear that the memes and the teams basically want to bridge that divide between man and machine. I mean, that's all these new leaps, these new machine learning algorithms, these new technologies are really all about bridging that divide. Another way to look at it is look at like the Star Trek Universal Translator, where they basically come across a brand new uh, alien species and then they just run them through this thing which almost instantly works out exactly what their language is and how to communicate. And so this is kind of what we're doing with technology. Technology and the internet and the machines are kind of like this alien species that we don't quite understand exactly how to communicate with yet. And so each advance, each leap is kind of bridging that gap so we can. The ultimate bridge will be things like brain-computer interfaces or what must cause are uh, the neural lace, where we're d directly communicating with the machines via our actual electrical activity rather than flapping up our mouth. And I think that perfect bridge will actually be, it'll come about much sooner than anyone thinks. I think it's somewhere between like that five to ten year period. But what we could be doing now is actually kind of like working, um, just being really aware of that bridge, that gap, um, and kind of working towards meeting them halfway. So us becoming more computer-like. And I think our society and our culture are already becoming much more computer-like in the way we speak to each other, in the way we behave, in the way we kind of go about our work and our kind of operations. That's just happening organically. But I think the country or the culture or the startup or the company or whatever um, who actually encourages their kind of uh, citizens, their, their people to be more machine-like, to talk and work with the machine. So I think if you look at like humans and computers as kind of like transistors on a giant symbiotic uh, AI, a symbiotic CPU, then what you really want to do is increase the number of them and decrease the gap between them. Imagine if a country like Estonia came out tomorrow and basically said that every single primary school child and every single high school kid, their entire curriculum, not only do they have to learn how to code, but they have to learn how to build their own AI. Imagine growing up in a society where it's absolutely normal to basically, from the age of say four or five or six, you start wearing augmented reality glasses and kind of smart earplugs that start recording everything you see and say. Such that from the age of say four, every single citizen is capturing everything they say, do, like basically every single input, all the inputs, all the outputs of themselves and everyone around them. And they pair all that data with basically like an open AI initiative where every single citizen has to basically learn how to build their own companion AI because there's massive benefits in that. It can go through all the data and benefit their lives. And so if you had a population of say 20 million people and each of them had their own companion AI, now you've basically doubled your population. And on top of that, you have 20 million resilient AIs that cannot be hacked or manipulated. Because you built it, your AI would be independent and unique from everyone else's AI. And your AI is built specifically to work in symbiosis with you, to help you learn, to help you work, to help you improve. And the result of that is that you basically end up with like, you know, 20 million um, AI researchers or every single citizen in your population becomes an AI researcher who is sharing data, sharing algorithms, sharing... And I think if any country was visionary enough to actually do this, sure, there's a few like cultural and societal and you know privacy issue hurdles to get over to begin, begin with, but you would end up literally becoming the economic powerhouse of the world. Your economy would double or at least quadruple in a very short amount of time. You'd spark a giant kind of national uh, maker revolution. And on top of that, your citizens are not under control by one AI. Meaning it decentralizes the AI power because every individual has their own companion AI that helps them through their life. And they work in symbiosis with that AI, but they've actually built it themselves. 
And I think because these symbiosis AIs, these companion AIs will be so um, powerful and will work so closely with them that they will have a lot of control and ability to manipulate us. And so a country that encourages their kids now to develop their own companion AIs will basically avoid being manipulated and controlled by the Amazon AI or the Google AI or the Facebook AI. Perhaps a society or a culture like that might actually end up developing organically its own uh, machine-like language, something that's better than English for communicating with the machines to bridge that gap much quicker. So what can we be doing right now to bridge the human and machine divide? Send me your own thoughts at Futural.